Uh, we're, we're continuing uh, to push to become effective Christians. That's, that's what our uh, focus is this month, uh, this year, uh, every day, is to become effective as Christians. And so um, we want to uh, continue in that direction in everything we do. Um, so uh, let's let's all confess this. Let's say I want y'all to say this real loud. Say, Lord, this year, Lord, this I year, I am willing, I am willing to submit my thoughts, to submit my thoughts to your thoughts, to your thoughts. Correct me as I grow. Correct me as I grow. Today we want to talk about how fear creeps in. We talk. We've been talking about faith for the last three, four, or five weeks. But we want to talk about how fear creeps in. Anybody uh, ever heard of fear before? Anybody ever been fearful of anything in your life before? Amen. Um, <laughs> Uh, we're not agreeing to fear, but we're agreeing that we have been fearful. Let's go. Let's go. Let's make sure we correct that. Uh, and so uh, we've been discussing faith, and um, it, it, it's important that you understand what fear is. Also, uh, we were talking about the faith that's given from the Holy Spirit. We're going to be reading from Acts uh, chapter two today. Acts chapter two. And so we've been discussing faith that's uh, been given to us from the Holy Spirit, uh, which is important. Uh, for us because it allows us to have strength, it allows us to endure through patience, um, it allows us to have, uh, you know, extended, you know, access to the extended mercy of God, um, but it allows you to understand that if you have faith, um, then you, and what the Lord can do for you, um, then when temptation comes, when trials come, because you have faith, it creates perseverance, because you have faith, the, the, the situation is not um, a, a detrimental or destroying you or, or something that's overwhelming. Why? Because you have faith. And so trials, you embrace trials when you're in Christ. You run away from them when you're in the world. And so um, we're trying to mature as Christians. I'm not trying to mature in the world. I'm not trying to be a great worldly man. I'm trying to be a great Christian. And as a great Christian, uh, you learn about the humility, the love, the, the, the mercy that Jesus Christ has upon us and what we're supposed to give to others. And so you have to understand when we talk about fear you know, uh, and faith, they're totally different because the opposite of faith is fear. And I want you to write that down. The opposite of faith is fear. That's the first thing you want to understand. Um, Romans 10, and I'm going to give you two or three scriptures this morning. Romans 10, 17, what we read last week says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the word about Christ. So it comes from hearing. It comes from hearing the message. You hear about uh, Jesus Christ and the growth happens through Jesus Christ and so the more you understand about Christ the more your faith is increased through the Holy Spirit does everybody understand the more um, you understand about Christ and his ways and what he wants us to do the more your faith is increased through the Holy Spirit and that's what we want to do we want our faith to, to increase through the Holy Spirit and so on the opposite side of that, the less you hear and understand about Christ, the less your faith is increased through the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get that? It's real simple. It's not, it's not complex or anything. It's real simple. And so the more you hear, the more uh, your faith is increased. The less you hear, the less, uh, the less you understand, the less your faith is increased. So faith and fear, they go hand in hand in opposite directions. Everybody get that? The faith and fear go hand in hand in opposite direction. So it's real simple when you're looking at it. Um, the more faith you have, the less fear you have. There, can we all agree on that? The more faith you have, the less fear you have. The less faith you have, the more fear you have. Everybody agree on that? So, let, so what, what we said is uh, more faith, less fear. And then when you have less faith, you have uh, more fear. And here, here's the, 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 the bottom part of that. No faith, much fear. You get that? Yes. So when your faith has decreased, your fear increases. 
And so, when, where do we hear the message about Jesus Christ? Because we have to understand how to knock that out. We have to understand when faith creep, uh, comes in and when fear leaves us. And then we have to know when fear creeps in and when faith leaves us. Because there is a moment that you have opportunities to reach for one or the other. You have to put down faith to pick up fear. You can't, you can't be fearful and say, oh, I trust you, God, but I'm scared. It's not the same thing. You either trust God and you don't walk on, on fear or you walk into fear and your trust is down here. And so for us as Christians, we have to learn the difference because it's important in your everyday walk in life to understand that faith and fear go in and hand, but they're in opposite directions. And so let's talk about that. Uh, where do we hear the message about Jesus Christ? Uh, well, the, the message about Jesus Christ is heard where? In the church. And what does the scripture say about service? Because some people ask, well, do I have to come to church? Do I need to be here? Is it important? Is it a must? Can't I just read the Bible by myself and, and not go to church? Why do I have to go to church? Well, there's several scriptures that talk about that. But today we're just talking from Acts. And I want you to understand the reason we have to go to church. Uh, we're reading a, a book of Acts in chapter 2. Um, the best way to understand what they did about, uh, or what we need to do about church is understand what they did about church. Uh, because they were the rough draft. They went through all the rough times. They went through all the persecution. There were people chasing after them, trying to kill them, and killing some of them. And so if they, the, if you understand how they performed in situations like that, what they did, it'll help you on a day-to-day -day basis. So Acts 2, we're reading uh, from verse 42 through 47. Acts 2, verse 42 through 47. Uh, verse 42 says this. It says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Who is they? The believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and to fellowship. And there's no and after that, so it means what's after fellowship is included as fellowship. So it says they devoted themselves to apostles' teaching and to fellowship. Um, and then it says to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So fellowship represents the breaking of bread and prayer. And so, um, so there's a few things you want to write down. So teaching, fellowship, which is defined as the breaking of bread, which can be the Lord's table, uh, which can also be them having a meal together. And prayer. So those three things are, are included. So they 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 allow the uh, teaching from the apostles. They fellowship by breaking bread and prayer. And so those are the three things that they did when they came together as a group. And so um, verse forty three says, everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. And then it says, all the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give anyone, uh, to give to anyone who had need. Every day, I want y'all to underline that. Every day they continue to meet. Does everybody, I want y'all to say that real loud. Say every day. Every day. They continue to meet. They continue to meet. So every day they continue to meet together in the temple courts. Now, uh, this every day they broke bread in the homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to the number daily those who were being saved. Everybody say amen. 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 So... It wasn't just a weekly thing uh, where they came together. And so, you know, we sit here as Christians and say, why do they have to come to church every week? They went to church every day. You know what I'm saying? They went to church every single day. Um, and so it wasn't just an every week thing. It was an everyday thing. And it wasn't just burdened as um, 
do I have to go to church? It's not one of those things. They didn't, make, they didn't come together and say, well, why do I have to go to church? Do I have to go to church? Why do I have to take my time out of my busy day to go to church? Why do I have, to, have you ever heard people say that? Well, why do I need to go to church? They didn't say that because it was part of them. It was like second nature. How many people in here uh, believe in coming to church? Say amen. Amen. How many people in here believe in brushing their teeth? Say amen. 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 How many people get up every morning and say, man, do I have? brush my teeth. Is that what we do? Do we get up and say that? Why? Because it's second nature for us to do that. So we don't get up every morning saying that. That's about as crazy as getting up every morning and saying, do I have to go to church? Do I have to read the Bible? Do I have to study the scripture? Why do I have to do all of that? And so, because now, uh, some of us may get up every morning and say, do I have to brush my teeth? But that's a whole different service. That's a whole different study. That's a one-on-one -on -one conversation. Uh, that we need to have with that person. But uh, um, the, the, the main thing in understanding this is that it was second nature. It was normal to them. They didn't come to church every week. They came to church every day. They didn't fellowship once a week. They fellowshiped every day. They ate with each other. They had meals. They talked with each other. They, they, didn't, they, they didn't just uh, have a phone conversation every other week. They had a phone conversation every day. They didn't have phones then, but they would talk to each other and communicate with each other day in, day out, break bread, talk with each other, hang out with each other, find out what that person needs, help that person who needs something, help the other person who needs. They would take care of each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. And so they learned the scripture in the temple courts from the teacher. They praised God in their homes. They ate together. And nowadays, people complain about meeting a few times a week. Isn't that crazy how we do that sometimes as Christians? We complain about, we say, we say, well, I can't do the Bible study, or I can't do that. Well, I can't come to church. I can't go to church every week. You expect me to go to church every week? Go to every Bible study. I, I don't expect you to do anything. The Lord does. Because we reach for Him every day. We need Him every day. And, and we, we tell Him, we, well, you expect me to go to every Bible study? He said, well, you expect me to help you every time you pray to me. You, you, you wake me up at 2 in the morning. You talk to me at 3 in the afternoon with your sickness and ask me to heal you. And you expect me to show up, but you won't show up for my Bible study. And let's not try to add another day. If we say, well, you know, imagine us as a church and we say, well, we're going to start praying every day. Everybody be like, well, I can do Monday and Wednesday. I can't do Monday and Wednesday, Tuesday and Thursday and Friday. I can't do all the days, Pastor. What do you want me to do? <laughs> That's part of being Christ. Like, they did it every day. They ate every day together. They shared meals. They broke bread. They talked to each other. They prayed together. They did all this stuff together. We can't do a couple days without complaining. If the air conditioning doesn't work at all, there'll be people saying, I can't come to the next week. It's, it's too hot up in there. Would, would we get that? We get people complaining about everything. We're so spoiled as Christians that sometimes we go in that direction. So the, the next question is, 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 what about Bible study? Why is that important? I want you to write this down. Because I think sometimes we miss it. Your enemy doesn't sleep. Write that down. Your enemy doesn't sleep. The other part to that is your enemy wants to devour you all day, every day. Your enemy wants to devour you every day, uh, all day, every day. Uh, so the two things to understand is your enemy doesn't sleep and he wants to devour you every day and all day of that day. How many believers in here have ever suffered because of their belief in Jesus? How many of you have ever suffered before? You went through trials, you went through all different types of things in your, in your life, and you've suffered before, before uh, for believing in Jesus Christ? Well, that's, that's part of the deal. And so um, I want you to write this scripture down, 1 Peter 5, and it's 8 through 9. 1 Peter chapter 5, 8 through 9. I'm going to read it to you real quick. Because all of us agree that we have suffered before. This is what it says. The Apostle Peter writes to the believers who were suffering, and this is what he says. He says, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. 
It says after that, resist him. Stand firm in faith because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of suffering. So what's he saying? He's saying the enemy, there's an enemy, the devil, he's prowling around like a roaring lion and he wants to devour each and every one of you. Do you understand that? Do you understand the seriousness of this? The enemy wants to devour you. He does not care if you go to church. He does not care if you study the Bible. He does not care if you pick up a Bible. He wants to devour you 24 hours a day. He doesn't care if you go to church once a week. Because once a week is not enough for what he's going to try to do for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't prepare you enough for what you're going to go through. So I can give you a sermon, but the sermon is not going to be enough to get you through every day of the week. You have to do more, and if you don't do more, you get more on the attack. And so the key words in what we just read are resist him standing firm in faith. Resist him standing firm in faith. The one thing I want you to understand, it's difficult to stand firm 24 hours a day. That's provided through the Holy Spirit through studying. When you only study once a week, one time a week. So if you only study one hour a week and he's attacking you 24 hours a day, the math is wrong. Can everybody say that? The math? Yeah. Say it real loud. Say the math, the math is wrong. Is wrong. And so it's difficult to stand firm 24 hours a day when you're only studying one hour a week. If this is the only time you study, if this is the only time you pick up the Bible, if you only pick up the Bible for uh, 30 minutes of one hour uh, per week, and, 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 and you know that the devil is out there to devour you, and you expect that 30 minutes to help you get through 24 hours a day for the seven days a week, you set yourself up for failure. Success is understanding your enemy wants to devour you and knowing your enemy like the back of your hand, knowing everything he wants to do to you and everything he wants to do against you and reading the scripture, understanding, knowing more about Jesus Christ each and every day, learning that. And then when it says, what it says is, when you resist the devil, that's when he'll flee from you. But if you don't resist them and say, I can only take, I, I take one hour a week of, of, of studying the Bible in church service on Sunday, and then after that, I give it up till next Sunday, well, then the attacks come, and it's not enough from that one uh, studying of the scripture to get you to the next week. Anybody ever been overwhelmed before? Amen. Anybody ever been overwhelmed when you cried out before to the Lord? Amen. And so to understand this makes us grow in Christ when we understand you have to do more. You cannot just sit back and, and let the enemy attack you over and over again. You have to know who your enemy is and you have to know that he wants to devour you 24 hours a day and he wants to keep you from one coming here and then he wants to keep you two from studying his word, studying the word of God. And so it's hard to win if the basic numbers do not match. So this is not rocket science here. Um, let me give you an example. If you had to drive 15 miles a, a, a day uh, for a week and you filled up once a week and you get 250 miles to the gallon, I mean to the tank, I'm sorry, to the gallon, we love that, uh, to the tank, then people wouldn't be lined up at all the stores down the street trying to get gas because everybody's panicking. Um, so if you had to drive only 15 miles a day in, uh, per, uh, per week, I mean for the whole week, um, you had a tank that gets you 250 miles, uh, then filling up once a week makes sense. You're only doing 15 miles a day. So filling up once a week, it, it makes sense. Why? Because the numbers match. And it's okay with that to do that. But if you had to drive 150 miles a day, how many people understand that filling up once a week and driving 150 miles a day, there are going to be six or seven days that you don't have gas. How many people agree on that? Amen. It does, why? Because the numbers don't match if you're only filling up once a week and you're driving more than, than, than the mileage needed in the day. The numbers don't match. Write this down. 
preparing for an enemy once a week who studies you 24 hours a day is not enough. Y'all hear that? Preparing for an enemy once a week who, study you, who studies you 24 hours a day is not enough. Not only does he study you 24 hours a day, but he knows your mother, he knows your mother's mother, he knows your father, your father's father, he knows all of your generations, he knows all the characteristics of how you're going to be, he knows everything that you do, and you only study him once a week? That's not enough. You want to know why we get attacked and why it seems overwhelming in our lives? It's because we study him once a week. And we think that's enough. And he doesn't care whether you think it's enough or not. He doesn't care whether you, whether you say, whether you think he exists or not. He doesn't care. Why? Because he's here to devour you 24 hours a day. He's not subject like we are to getting tired or anything like that. He doesn't get tired. He continues on and on. Why? Because he wants to destroy you. And if you're preparing for an enemy who does not tire, who doesn't have flesh like you, then you have to be smart with it. You have to prepare like the first, the, the first people uh, in Christianity repaired, bro, I mean, prepared. What did they do? They ate with each other. They talked with each other. They, they fellowshiped with each other. They prayed with each other. They believed in Jesus Christ and they knew he existed because they were fresh. He was fresh on their minds. And so the works that they did was daily. We've got to be communicating with each other daily. We've got to be talking to each other daily. If the common thing to do is text, we've got to be texting each other daily, doing what we got to do, talking about Scripture, talking about the Lord. We're not supposed to spend 24 hours a day talk, or 23 hours talking about the world and one hour talking about the Lord. That's not enough if we want to grow in Christ. We come here and we let out what we've been feeling all week. Well, we, we should be coming here rejoicing on what the Lord has done for us every day this past week. And so prepare for an enemy once a week who studies you 24 hours a day is not enough. Mm -hmm. Write this down. You have to even the playing field. You have to even the playing field. In Matthew 4, after Jesus had fasted for 40 days, the tempter came to him and tempted him with food. And Jesus said something that's so key to where we need to go as Christians. He said, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. You understand the mouth of God by studying the word of God. You don't understand the mouth of God any other way. You understand the mouth of God by studying the word of God. And if you don't study the word of God, you're setting yourselves up for failure. You're, you're in the game, but you're not playing the game. You've accepted Jesus Christ, so every demon all over this world sees you and knows that you have acknowledged Christ. But then you go on doing your regular things, and the demons plot according to what your grandparents did, according to what your great-grandparents did, according to what all the generations of your lives have done. That's what he wants to do. So going to service, daily, studying the Bible, personal or public. I'm not just talking about coming to the Bible studies we're talking about. Well, I'm, just, I'm talking about coming to Bible study in general, whether it's your own Bible study, sitting down by yourself, studying the word. If you have questions, calling uh, you know, myself or my wife or somebody who has the answers to your question or studying online, searching the scripture and making sure it's correct. It's up to you to be doing that on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you're not, you're setting yourselves up for failure. You're setting yourselves up for attacks. How many people, how many, we all raised our hand and said we, feel, we felt overwhelmed before. How many people have wanted to go back to old things you used to do? How many people have wanted to resist, the, resist God sometimes and go back to the old ways? How many people have been tempted to drink, to smoke, to go in those wrong directions? Brother Edmund was talking about, I, I don't know if you heard his play, his, the way he said the words, 
He said he was being attacked by depression, was being attacked by anxiety and all those other things, but he's overcome them by the blood of Jesus. He's overcome them by what Christ has done in his life. Instead of saying he's overwhelmed by them, he said he's overcome them. So us as Christians, we've got to learn how to overcome. Going to service daily, studying the Bible personally or publicly, they're essential to staying above the attacks because the attacks will come. Satan's not looking at you and saying, well, you haven't studied enough. I'm going to wait until you study more before I attack you. I'll be back. Bye. How many people know that that's not how he talks? How many people know he's not going to agree with you and say, well, when you understand more scripture, we can talk on who's right and who's wrong. He doesn't care about that. He didn't care about your history of studying or anything else. He only cares about what you know about Jesus and what you know about his power and his lack thereof. And so it's necessary just to stay above water if we're just going to service daily or studying the Bible publicly or personally. That's necessary to stay. How many people want to stay just above water? If you want to stay just above water, Reading the scripture every day, uh, breaking bread with somebody, talking about Jesus, um, a prayer, those things are just a necessity to stay above water. How many people want to be overcomers? How many overcomers in here? Say hallelujah if you want to overcome. Hallelujah. hallelujah. If you want to overcome, you've got to do more work. You can't sit back and say, I'm waiting on Jesus and expect things to show up. You can't sit back and say, well, I'm sick. I'm just waiting on Jesus to show up and heal me. You've got to pray for, for Jesus to heal you. You've got to pray for the Lord to respond. You've got to seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything about him will be added unto you. If you don't do that, you're not serious. You can't say, I'm serious. I really, really, Pastor, I really want this job. Okay, well, what have you done to get this job? Well, I looked at it online. No, no, that's not what I'm asking. What have you done to get this job? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm praying to God, asking him for the job. What have you done to get the job? Well, well, I thought about it. I prayed deeply, and I'm asking that. I hope the, the manager will call me. So, well, wait a minute. Have you put in an application? Well, no, I haven't. But why? Because I'm waiting on Jesus. How much sense does that make? It sounds crazy to say that, but how much more sense does that make than for us to study once a week and expect everything to be held over till next Sunday? doesn't work that way. You have to put forth the work. You, in order to get a job, you have to put forth an application. In order for that application to be read, you have to make sure you turn the application in. Once you turn it in, you have to go to the people and talk to them and, and be boisterous and tell them, hey, look, I'm looking for a job. Who do I talk to about that? Oh, hell, on human resources? Okay, well, let me talk to somebody in human resources. Oh, uh, yeah, this is Larry Graham. I'm looking for a job. You know, you have to do the things. If you want to receive the job, you have to do something that ordinary people wouldn't do. It's the same thing as Christians. If we want to grow as Christians, we can't sit here in our sulking and say, well, I don't know what's happening. I don't know why this is happening. You have to uh, dig your feet deep in studying the scripture. And so the necess it's necessary to go to service. It's necessary to study the Bible if we just want to stay above water. If we are going to basics, we haven't even gotten on the field to destroy the devil's works. And all of us in here want to destroy the devil's work. How many people want to grow in Christ so strong that when you call the name Jesus, he's right in front of you. And you know that the anointing of God is right in front of you, all over you, ready to attack who's ever in front of you. You can call upon Jesus like that and his angels show up. Why? Because they see the faith that is growing in you. Because you're studying. You're showing yourselves approved. You're understanding the word. You say, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. You can speak the word and trust God to show up. How many people want that type of faith? Amen. You don't get it one time a week. You get it staying in your prayer closet. You get it praying as you walk, praying as you drive, praying at now, pray with your eyes open if you drive. <laughs> but you pray all the time. How many people pray all times a day? You're saying, Lord, bless me. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless that person, Lord. Protect them. Take care of them. Do Look, that's what we're supposed to do, but that's just part of the deal. You've got to study the scripture. You can't just pray. You can't just pray through it. 
You have to pray through it, study the word, see the scripture, and what you'll understand is when you're reading something, after you've done your praying, you say, I'm going to read something today, and you pick something to read, it's always going to be something that relates to what you're dealing with. Has anybody ever experienced that? If you experienced that, say amen. Amen. You know why? Because God knew you before your experience. And he knows every single thing you're going to go through as a Christian. And you've got to trust him. If he'll show you that, if you just pick any scripture and say, Lord, I'm going through it. You read it and say, my son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life for many years. Love, uh, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will receive favor in God's name. I just picked that out of blue. And so... How many in here want to destroy the works of Satan and overcome fear by increasing your faith? Remember we said fear and faith are opposites. If you increase one, the other diminishes. If you have a lot of faith, then fear is way down here. If you have a lot of fear, then faith becomes, goes, moves down lower. And there's a point where they're even, but you want faith to be up here, and you want fear to be where it's rightfully supposed to be. Well, you have to ask yourself two questions. And I got two questions that you can ask yourself that will establish and, and uh, that will expose or promote you as Christian. This has nothing to do with me. I want you to ask yourself these questions. The first question. And I want you to write down these numbers. You don't have to show me these numbers. You just write them down yourself. Some of you can look at that and say, oh, I'm good. Some of you can look at that and say, oh, got work to do. So I want you to ask yourself these questions, these tough questions. How many services have I missed? And how many services have I made? Ask yourself that question. Now, if you can take down the number uh, missed and the number made, if the number missed is larger than the number made, then your level of fear is most likely subject to be larger than your level of faith. Look, if you say, I've only been to two services, then your level of fear is going to be way up here. Why? Because you haven't been studying. If you say, I, I, we can take that with the Bible, we can take that with the services, we can take that with Bible study, we can take that in every way. Look that, apply that to your lives. It's simple. You ask yourself those two questions when it relates to any subject, and you'll know where you're at. How many services have I missed, and how many services have I made? If you look at the services missed, and you say, oh, well, services missed, I missed 200, and I made two, well, then your level of fear is going to be way up here, because you only understand two, uh, two services. If you say, I made 100 services, and I missed 100 services, well, then your level of fear is going to be pretty much right here. You can look at your life. I can look at that person's life and say, oh, this is why you're having this. This is why you're experiencing that. Because you're not studying the word and you're not applying the word to your life. You've only applied it half the times. So, the other question I want you to ask yourself is, how many Bible studies have you missed and we're talking about public or personal. Your personal Bible study, where you say, I'm going to study tonight at 9 o'clock every night uh, uh, for the rest of my year. How many of those have you missed? And how many of those have you made? If you can establish that number, you'll know where your level of fear or faith is. How many Bible studies have you missed? And how many Bible studies have you made? Now, if the number of missed Bible studies is larger than the number of made, then your level of fear is subject to be larger than your level of faith. Mathematics, it's real simple. And so, now ask yourself the same question about prayer time. How much prayer time have you missed and how much prayer time have you made? If you've communicated and said, I'm going to pray every day at this time of the morning or this time of the evening or afternoon, whatever it is, you've got to ask yourself, how many of those have you made and how many of those have you missed? If you said you were going to do it and you stopped after the first week, and it's been 10 weeks now, then your level of fear is going to probably be higher than your level of faith. Why? Because you're not doing what you said you were going to do. And so, now, who in here thinks that they can take an advanced level trigonometry test 
and pass. Everybody hold their hands up and think they can take that right now and pass. Without studying, you ain't got to study anything. Uh, we're going we're gonna to pass out. we got the papers right here, an advanced trigonometry test. Who, be, who in here think that they can pass that? Everybody raise their hands. The people who, who haven't studied who think they can pass. Let the record show that I'm the only one with my hand up. So nobody thinks they can pass that test. Why? Why do we not think we can pass that test without studying trigonometry? Why is that? Why, 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 why is everybody scared to raise their hands and say that they can, they think that they can pass that test? So I, I have the question, who in here, who, you know, who in here thinks that they can take a life test without notes from the creator of life? Who, who in here thinks that you can take a life, we're going to give a life test, just like a trigonometry test, but we're not going to give you the notes from the creator of life. We're not going to give you the history of the creator of life. We're not going to give you the information from the creator of life, but we want you to take this test. That's what we do every day. When we sign up, we, we, we say we believe in the creator. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe that he is God. We believe he's that Alpha and Omega, but we don't want to study him. And, and when the test comes, because the enemy wants us to take this test over and over again, we fail. Why? Because we're trying to take a test we haven't even studied So every time you miss a service, every time you miss a Bible study, whether public or personal, you set yourself up for fear to creep in. Write this down. Plan to hear and understand more about the Lord. Plan to hear and understand more about the Lord. That's the number one thing, the first and the last thing we should want to do. Why is that? Because Satan doesn't care about your plans. He wants you to fail the test. Satan doesn't care that you haven't studied trigonometry. He's going to test you daily. He doesn't care that you don't understand the Bible. He's going to test you with things of the Bible because all he has is the things that God says not to do. When he gets you to do what God says not to do, he's winning. But when you, if you don't understand the, the, the works of Jesus, if you don't understand what he says about fear, what he says about faith, what he says about love, what he says about wisdom and all those other things, if you don't understand them, you're setting yourselves up for fear to creep in. So plan to hear and understand more about Jesus Christ. <clears throat> because Satan doesn't care about your plans. He plans for, for you daily even though you plan for him weekly. He plans for you 24 hours a day, even if you read the scripture one hour a day. He plans through your generations, even if you're only in this generation and not trying to search back to the other generations. He plans for you to, uh, he plans for the wisdom that he's learned from God, even though we refuse to accept the wisdom that God offers to his children. He does not care about you. He wants to destroy you, and he's using everything that he can to destroy your life, to pull you away from the scripture of God. He's using things cleverly disguised as family problems. Anybody ever had some family problems? He's using things cleverly disguised as friends and family problems, issues at your house, issues at your job. He's using all those things to pull you away. He's using uh, sports to pull you away from studying the scripture. Why is that? Because if you don't study and watch that sports game, you didn't even study for the test that he's going to put you through tomorrow. And so in order, um, in order to know how to obtain and sustain faith, you must first know how it creeps in. Faith, uh, or fear, I'm sorry, the staying faith, you must first know how fear creeps in. Uh, fear creeps in through your lack of learning and lack of understanding. And it's not something that Satan sits here and says, I'm going to make them not do this. We do this on our own free will. We resist going to church on our own free will. We resist listening uh, to God on our own free will. 
It's nothing to do with Satan. It's everything to do with us. It's our choice to decide not to go to church. It's our choice to decide not to read the Bible. We can't blame Satan for that because he'll attack every other area of our life, but we're still blaming him when we were the ones who chose not to go to church. We chose not to read the Bible. We chose not to understand scripture. Why? Because it wasn't that popular, because it wasn't that fun, because we weren't jumping around screaming, because it didn't put an excitement in your flesh. So it's tough to hear this, but in order for us to obtain and sustain faith, you must first know how fear creeps in. And it creeps in through our lacking trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you say you trust God, you must study God. If you say you trust the Lord and love him, you must study his scripture and understand him. You must know what he says about faith. You must know what he says about love. You must know what he says about forgiveness. You must know what he says about all these things because once you know that, when the devil comes in and says, I need you to be mad at that person, you say, I love them in the name of Jesus because Jesus created them, not you. And to learn how to talk to the enemy and tell him how big your God is instead of how big your problem is. If you've been blessed, I need you to stand and give God glory in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen.